Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And guys, this video is not for everybody. It's not for the 10%. It's not for the 5%. It is not for the 3%. It's for the 1% of individuals out there that dream big, that have limitless imagination that have limitless dreams that have unchained their minds that live beyond their minds that access the universe the people that tap into their dreams that that's what this video that's who this video is for there are videos out there for cheerleaders. There are videos out there for home builders. There are videos out there for cooking. There are channels out there, guys, for automotive. There are channels out there for lawn care. There are channels out there For makeup. There are channels out there for the 90% of people that have a poverty mindset. There are poverty channels out there. There are poor channels out there for poverty. There are channels out there for a luxurious, wealthy life. There are channels out there for obese people. There are channels out there for people who love pets and animals. Like there's something out there for everybody, guys. This channel is dedicated. It's designed for those who want to break outside the matrix, who want to break the chains of the matrix. Who want to free themselves from the limits of the matrix, from limiting beliefs, from corrupt mindsets, from the mind of poverty and stress. This channel is for those people who don't put their imagination in prison, who don't in incarcerate their dreams. That's what this channel is for. For the people who do not care about what other people think about their dreams and their imagination. For the Ferraris, the Bugattis, the Paganis, the Benz. The Wright Brothers. Of the world. The Musk of the world. The, the Bezos of the world. The Jobs of the world. Just to name a few who we're familiar with. The Gates of the world. There are videos out there for those people. There's videos out there for everybody else. So guys, I want to live beyond my mind. And sometimes guys, you have to take chances. You have to take risk. You have to think and dream big. You think performing heart surgery is easy? You think doing a heart transplant is, is, is simple? That's a miracle. It takes, it, takes an, it takes a massive knowledge and education and imagination to do a heart transplant. 
to do a kidney transplant. Now, kidney transplants and heart transplants are done every day. It used to be thought of as impossible. Now they're done every day. It's a routine surgery. You may be in the hospital for two weeks or three weeks after a heart transplant, guys. They have eye transplants. All kind of things that are going on, guys, in this world that we don't know about because we don't pay attention to the miracles that's happening every day to Im the imaginations that are being fulfilled and manifesting every day. Somebody is manifesting their imagination. Their movies in their minds is coming to reality every day. Star Trek and Star Wars, the imagination of the mind is coming to reality every day. There are hundreds of movies that have been become reality, guys. That's where it starts. A, a limitless imagination. An unchained mind. Hold on, guys. Okay, guys. Yeah, so I'm back. I don't know where I left off at. I have no idea. I had to do something. But anyway, guys, so... Guys, yes, yeah, so pursuing your dreams is your responsibility, guys. And you can't let fear stop you for having having dreams in, ima in your imagination. Just because you don't acquire something don't mean you fail. That's not what that means. It only meant that it wasn't for you. If it's for you, you will get it. You will acquire it. But you have to pursue it with... Hold on, guys. But you have to... You have to pursue it with enough drive, ambition, and passion. It is within your reach. But you have to have a plan. You have to have a roadmap to get to where you want to where you want to get to, to reach the way you want to get to. You have to have a roadmap, guys. So let's take a look at Pagani, the dreamer, the di designer, the artist, the engineer. Let's go take a small look at his life. Hold on, guys. Okay, so Pagani was born in Argentina to Luca and Maria Pagani. His father, Luca, was a baker from Italy. Pagani took an interest in engineering while he still lived in Argentina. However, he left from the beginning. However, he felt from the beginning that the rural town into which he was born was inadequate for fulfilling his dream of an engineering career. That says it all right there, guys. Sometimes the, the town that you're from the people that you are around, the city, the environment may be inadequate for fulfilling your dreams. A lot of people have that problem, but they don't realize it. And they don't have the vision or the passion to go beyond their city, their town, their family, or their friends. So you know what they settle for? They settle for buying a Ford and working at Walmart. That's what they settle for. There are geniuses and engineers and dreamers all around us. They're everywhere. Just like the psychopaths. They're everywhere. But they just settle for that, the girlfriend. They just settle for having a child and working at, at Safeway for 20 years. Never pursuing their dreams. Never leaving the town. They just stay there. In Flagstaff. In Phoenix. In Kingsman. In Tucson. In Atlanta. In Macon. In Houston. 
in Dallas, in Albuquerque. They just stay there, guys. Never leave. All those dreams, all those imaginations and visions, they just stay there. That's why it's crowded. When your average, that that's that average space is crowded with hundreds of millions of people. Because it's easier to be average. You know why? Because you can blend right in. You don't stick out. You can blend. You, 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 you can like sneak, fall through the cracks of average. But once you start going above and beyond average, that's when you start sticking out. That's when you people start paying attention to you and, and try to chop you down. Because the nail that sticks up gets the hammer. So people are afraid to go beyond average. They're afraid to reach, reach for higher. Because they stand out then. And they get and they get the hate. That and they get the hater starts. Oh man, you 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 can't be a millionaire. You, you're not gonna be rich. You can't build a car. You can't have a design team. You can't work for F1. You can't build an airplane. You can't be a pilot. You can't do those things. So yes, guys, Pagani felt that the town that he was from was inadequate for fulfilling his dream of an engineering career. So he opened a small shop where he worked at as a very young age. Gaining valuable experience in craftsmanship. By the age of 20, Pagani had designed and built his first F3 racer. By the age of 20, y'all, guys, 20 years old. You know, so I'm not going to read a lot about it. I just want to show you that, guys, that, you know, you can limit yourself. Or your town or your city can limit you. But you have to allow that to happen. You have to allow that to happen. Of course, like most genes and engineers, you're going to get lots of rejections. And Pagani had those same experiences. Nobody wanted to touch him. Nobody believed in his dream or his vision. Nobody saw what he saw. But he pursued anyway, and he persisted. Okay, guys, hold on. Okay, guys, here, here's a little more information. So, Pagani. Pagani visited Lamborghini and met with the company's chief technical director, Giuliani Alfrio. In 1982, he decided to move to Italy. And he was hired by Lamborghini. Pagani began working basic jobs as sweeping floors. This guy was a janitor. He got hired as a janitor. This guy was a, a as was an engineer, a genius engineer. He was hired as a janitor at Lamborghini. And in time, he was able to work his way up in the company. That's how humble he was. He was a humble genius. He began working his way up to the company. He became the chief engineer at Lamborghini and he built the Kunta ever ever loosenized concept car. He tried to persuade Lamborghini to buy an autoclave so they could extend the production of the carbon parts for the Evolution. They refused, saying that the Ferrari did not have an autoclave. So Lamborghini didn't need to have one. Pagani borrowed the capital to buy his own autoclave late in 1987. And then in 1991, five years later, guys, he broke away from the company. He quit Lamborghini. Imagine that. He quit Lamborghini and found his own consultancy called Medina Design, which continues to make carbon fire composites for Formula One cars and clients like Dalma, Ferrari, and Aprilo. See guys, so so sometimes guys, you gotta take a step back. You gotta make, make lateral moves. You gotta make hard decisions for yourself, guys, to pursue your dreams. Okay, guys. 
So, let me go back to where I was at. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on. Where we at? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Hold on. So, yeah, guys. So, this is the Pagani Waywa. I think that's how they pronounce it. Waywa. I think it's like H U A Y A or something like that. You have, you have to look it up, guys. I can't, I can't remember. But anyway, it's called, it's $4 million, guys, which is nothing. And the reason I'm saying that is nothing, like I've said in previous videos, guys, that I don't worship money. So the value of a thing is irrelevant. It, it only has value to the people who want it. That's who it has value to. This has no value to a person who loves Toyotas. It has no value to somebody who don't care about supercars. Like Warren Buffett would not buy this car, even though he got like a hundred billion dollars. It, it, it has no value to him. And if he was to buy it, it would only be for an asset. So he can resell it. He he don't he he don't value he don't have the same value as somebody like well, Andrew Tate who loves supercars. See guys, so you have to create your own value system. But you don't want to limit yourself. Like some people, a pack of cigarettes is super valued to some people. It's super valuable. They'll pay five hundred dollars for a pack of cigarettes. See, so I mean, so it all depends. You know, that's why you can't let society place value on things for you. You can't let society place values on you. You have to place values on yourself. For me, my value is infinite. That's my value. If you want me to put a monetary figure, a million, a million dollars. I don't know, five million dollars. You know, who cares? You know, who, who cares? That's how you got to think about it, guys. Like, you don't have to tell everybody how much you think you're worth. But if that's how much you think you're worth, be, be, be that delusional, that delusional dreamer. It's yours. If, if the other person over here, he might think he's worth 10 bucks. The woman that, that on, the, on the street, she might think she's only worth $20. Like, seriously, like, you like, 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 sir, you can have me all night for $20. That's her value. That's her worth. I'm not glorifying that lifestyle. I'm just saying. That's how some people are. Some people think they are, they are a G shop, a hundred dollars G shop. Other people think they're, they are, they are a $10 million Jacob and company watch. It all depends. It all depends on the individual. That's why, guys, it's so important to to know your worth, know your value. And just because you're working at a job for twenty dollars or thirty dollars an hour, that's not what you're worth. That's what they they say that you're worth. But you're worth way more than that to your daughter. You're worth, worth way more than that to your son. You're way, worth way more than that to your wife. That's why if you're around somebody who don't value your worth, you got to get from around them. If they treat you like you're nothing, like you're like a disposable father or a disposable husband, get them the hell away from, get the hell away from them. Because that's the kind of person that will destroy your life. You don't want to be around anybody who does not value you. Don't You don't want to be around, be around anybody who, who, who's tolerating your presence. You want to be around somebody who celebrates your presence. You know when you come home, you got a pet or a dog. When you come home, 
That dog man thinks that you are the most incredible person in the world. He's wagging his tail. He's jumping all over you. Total, total love. Total unconditional love. That dog is wagging his tail, man. He's so happy. He's like, oh my God, I can't wait for you to get back home. You've been gone for two hours. Love, you want to go, want you to take my side for a walk, man. Won't let nobody around you. You are his pack leader. You are his, you are his first love. You are his soulmate. That dog is crazy about you. That's who you want in your environment. And you know why that dog? You know why that dog feels that way about you? Because he feels your energy. If you, a, if you are a low life, low vibrating, low frequency, negative, nasty person, that dog won't even wag his tail. He'll, he'll, he'll put his tail between his legs and go and, and get away from you because he hates you. But he got to deal with you because he live with you and you feed him like, damn, I got to deal with this psychopath every day for the rest of my life universe what did i do to deserve this dirty ass person this low vibrating this low frequency negative nasty ungrateful mean-spirited evil bastard in my life that's what the dog is asking the universe like what did i do did i do something in my past life and now i'm coming back as a dog with a psychopath as my master? That's, that, is that what happened? Well, you know what, universe? That's why I apologize to the universe. I apologize to the universe, to anybody who I, that I've hurt or been mean to, because I do not want to come back as a dog where a psychopath is my owner. So I'm apologize to the universe right now. Do not bring me back here as a dog where that my psychopath is my owner. Okay, guys. So that's, you want to be around somebody who celebrates you, not tolerates you. Guys, unchain your mind, unincarcerate your imagination. Think big, dream big. You don't have to live big. But you can dream big. Let the horizon be your destination. Let the world be your destination. Your, def your destination should never end. You should always be on a psychological, a, a motivational, a meditation mode. Oh, no, no. The role of exploration. Always. You should never have a destination. You should always want to be on the psychological, motivational road to bigger and better things. Okay, guys. Until next time, guys, whoever this video was for. Until next time, guys, remember, keep your mind clean, keep your life clean, keep your car clean, keep your home clean, keep your diet clean, guys. Guys, download and deploy your anti-mind virus software. Debug and unplug from the matrix so the matrix will not be telling you that you're only worth $20, $30, $40, $50, $60. Guys, there is no value on you. How much? I'm going to save that for another video. I'm going to make a video and it's going to talk about how much you are worth. It's going to be, it's going to get deep. Some feelings may get hurt. It's going to get deep, but be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Okay, guys. Until next time, guys. Drink plenty of fresh water. Drink plenty of water, spring water to flush out the toxins, the poisons and the chemicals that's in the food supply, guys. You are being poisoned. Guys, there are three types of mind control and poison that's going on in the matrix. I'm going to name all three of them. Hold on. I know it's a long video. I'm going to name all three of them. Chemical warfare. Like, this is against you. This is not against the terrorists 
that's in other parts of the world. This is against you right here in America. Chemical, you are in you are in a war. You don't even know it. I know this is another. I know this is another topic. Real quick, real, real, real quick, off topic. You are in a war. You don't even know it. You are in three wars, and you don't even realize it. You may be in four, but I'm just named three. You are in a chemical warfare through your food supply. You are in a biological warfare with the pharmaceutical industry that want to keep you drugged up and doped up so you're out of your freaking mind. And you are in a psychological warfare, psyop. You know, psychological warfare with the programs that are being deployed on you through social media, music, and the movies to manipulate your perception of reality, to control your mind. You're in the mind control, MK Ultra, the Manchurian candidate. Chemical warfare, biological warfare. Psychological warfare. Those are the three wars that you're in that you don't even know that you're in. And you're being totally annihilated. And you don't even know it. So guys, become aware. Resurrect your consciousness because you're, you're dead. Resurrect your consciousness, guys. And become aware of what's going on in this world, in your life. And realize why you're depressed. You then you'll understand. Say, oh, that's why I'm depressed. I'm in a freaking war. That's why I have PTSD. And don't even realize it. You've been in a war since you were born. Okay, guys. Until next time, guys. Country Band Seven Seven Seven. I'm signing off. Now go and conquer yourself. Peace.